fun. Thank you. Wow, Maria. Hi. Long time no see. Hey, Sam. Hey, Brittany. Hey, everyone. Hello, hello. Hello. Brittany, Hi. good to see you again. Good to see you all. I don't have my camera today, but... <laughs> it's fine. No worries. I can see you have your mic on, so... Or you can unmute, that's great. Um, Welcome everyone. First, just let's settle in. Let's take a couple of minutes to arrive and uh, make ourselves comfortable. The music you hear in the background, you can manage that locally. You will find a slider, a volume slider at the bottom of your screen. Feel free to turn it down or up according to your energy levels today. And speaking of energy, the check-in question we have today is what gives you energy at work? And there's an embedded poll in Butter. So all you have to do is type your answers and then click submit your answer. And we're going to see that at the at the at the at the other end of the line. So let's take a moment to tune into with our energy boosters. What gives you energy at work? Got a plus one on my coffee. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> we've got laughing, we've got coffee, creative projects, discussing new features with users, <laughs> helping others. All right. Keep them coming. I will kill the music for now. And yeah, if we haven't met before, my name is Anna Maria. I'm the founder of LMD Shakers. I also work at Butter, this uh, beautiful tool that we're finding ourselves in today. And I am stepping in today for um, to our colleagues, Susanna and Angela. They are our playground catalysts and they can't, well, they can, they will join us later today. Um, but I'm very, very excited to be hosting one of the sessions uh i used to host the first ones and it, it is a wonderful form format that we have within the community which allows us to test out and play with new concepts ideas tools frameworks uh, they're very facilitating very hands-on very interactive and the hosts are bringing in a concept or something they would like to explore for the first time. It's not a place for per perfection. It's not a place for experts sage on the stage. It's truly really an experimental session. Uh, and this will give us the opportunity at the end to share a couple of insights, tips, feedback, etc., based on what Chris and Henrik Jan need from us today. So we are immersing ourselves into the session in order to share the feedback that they're looking for and, and have them uh, and us have a great learning experience. So that's the format. That's what's going to happen today. And now on to our guests, uh, Jan Hendrik and Chris. They're both part of LND Shakers. Chris for a longer time and Hendrik for, I think, a couple of months ago, we've met uh, in Amsterdam. They both live in Amsterdam. And uh, Hendrik Jan is an experienced product innovation lead and a business founder. And he is facilitating organizations who care to improve well-being, has a cute app called Noon. We use that at Butter as well. It's really fun to chat with Noon every single day in Slack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he likes to build great workplaces by facilitating companies to take on employee well-being as a core value and with him is uh, Chris and Chris I think you guys are using Noon as well if I'm not mistaken right um, head of talent at Builders a startup studio building tech companies and teams from the ground up uh, from corporate to startups with a few scale ups in between Chris experienced firsthand the challenges of leading team in a fast paced world and so his mission is to empower individuals to learn grow and unlock their full potential 
Did I do a good job at introducing you? Yes, me? thanks, Anna Maria. Thank you for hosting the session, the playground today. Um, the floor is yours. Feel free to take it away. Well, thank you. I will kick it off, but uh, I will, um, in a minute, hand it over to uh, to Chris um, because um, I'm part of the session. But Chris is uh, our, our host, natural our natural host that uh, hosts in these kinds of sessions. As 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 said, my name is Hendrik Jan. Uh, I'm from Amsterdam, uh, and working at Noon.Work, which is an integration with Slack, overseeing well-being at work. Um, and why I love sessions like this is uh, because we learn so much from it. Uh, essentially, Noon is about reflecting. Uh, and based on reflection you do about your work, you experience to what extent work fits you. Um, and uh, based on insights on possible misfits, um, we um, try to facilitate organizations building well-being strategies. And I know for a fact that a lot of you present are trained to actually roll out courses and programs to get to a better experience at work. So why I think this session is great is uh, to be able to collaboratively come to uh, sort of uh, well-being strategies and uh, well-being executions. Uh, I quickly hand over the floor to Chris. Yes, thanks, Hendrik Jan, and hi, everybody. Um... Well, Anna Maria already introduced me and she did an amazing job already, so I won't go too much longer into that. Um, but um, one thing I do want to mention is, yeah, I'm passionate about well-being and also creating inclusive spaces. And um, the question that we asked at the beginning of the session, what makes you, what gives you energy at work is very important to us because we always try to reflect on how we can maximize those items around us that give us the most energy and you can see actually on the slide that the lava plant is what gives me a lot of energy it just makes me really happy to take care of it every day and to see it grow just like myself and yeah so that's me and over to you Hendrik Jan about the agenda of today um, yeah, so um, what we like to uh, to do today is, uh, well, obviously it's going to be an interactive session. So uh, although we do the introductions, we depend on uh, a lot of you in terms of uh, valuable content as well. Uh, what we like to do is, uh, well, tell a little bit about uh, what we found on, on well-being, more from a theoretical and framework level. Um, talk a little bit about the six work-life areas that we use as part of our tool, but it's not exclusively to our tool to scan organizations on those six areas of work life. Um, and uh, what we like to end up with today is uh, sharing solutions to uh, to improve well-being. So obviously we do a lot of scanning on uh, six areas of work life. And based on what we found uh, something to work on, we would like to provide individuals and organizations with the best hacks, we call them hacks, to improve on those areas of work life. So it would be interesting to gather today to discuss uh, best practices that you experienced in your work life to uh, improve on certain areas of work life. Um, and I think uh, everybody here is involved in the topic, otherwise you would probably not be here. So I'm, I'm also wondering what is on your mind in terms of what to improve in your organization. So it would be interesting to share what, uh, what you could benefit from uh, learning from each other. A few tips before we progress um, is also to make sure that um, you practice good posture during the session as well, um, and that uh, you keep, you know, it's always something we, we forget because we look into a screen like this, and then at the end of the day, we have some neck pain, some back pain, and stuff like that. So practice good posture. Uh, play with us as well. We have a smaller group today, so feel free to be a tennis ball and make that bounce back with us. And obviously, some of you might be at home. Uh, maybe you have your pets with you. Just come as you are. All pet friends are welcome. Uh, I uh, do a lot of the, the, those sessions at home, and I have two cats, so they also sometimes come. They're not here today, unfortunately, but I would love to see some of yours if, the, if you have any. Um, so that being said, I think let's move forward. Um, I'm going to dive right into the topic. So I think before I maybe go through the slides, what I would like to explore first around well-being is to 
try to understand what's happening all around the world. Um, all, all around us, we see that um, well-being is becoming more and more of a, of a challenge. So how can we really um, improve well-being for our teams, for ourselves, for organizations in general? And there's this major trend happening all around the world. And it's such a critical topic. It's really about how can we improve um, our own well-being? How can we help each other doing that? And I would love for us together to first look into what's happening all around the world. So I would like to invite you um, to play with us. Um, and we have a first question for you. And the first question is, what percentage of the global workforce struggle with their mental health directly related to chronic stress at work? And you can use the chat um, on the toolbar on the left to give us what you think the percentage is. I'll give you a few seconds. 65, 70%, a third, 65. Yeah, I see that the, the numbers on, on the high end. Let's see what the report says. 34.7%. Uh, so uh, Sam was indeed uh, the, the closest uh, to that numbers. Um, that uh, number comes from uh, 2021. Uh, we're still updating the numbers on 2022. But um, indeed, one third um, of um, employees at work um, have experienced those uh, mental health issues. So it's definitely something that also came uh, also during COVID. But also today, obviously, a lot of challenges are still occurring post COVID. So it's so important to note that it's still over a third of the of the workforce there. Second question, and maybe some of you might get also very close. Uh, second question is what percentage of uh, European employees indicates that their company cannot spot stress levels before they escalate into absenteeism, burnout, and turnover. Let us know in the chat what you think the percentage is. Seventy, eighty percent, sixty. You're cheating, Hendrik, Young, because you already know the answer. But <laughs> seventy percent. Again, okay, quite similar number as mentioned before, and still on the on the high end. Let's see what the report says. Forty six percent. Still a pretty uh, large number, um, and. Here we have someone who was the closest. Well, Hendrik Yan, I think, was, uh, was the closest, but you already know, knew the answer, so that doesn't count. Um, so I would say Brittany then was the closest. Um, so indeed, it's quite it's still quite alarming because almost half of um, employees mentioned that their uh, employer cannot spot the stress level before they escalate to more severe cases. That's quite a lot, actually, right? And so we realize that there's a real issue in terms of um, how do we talk about well-being? How do we both empower employees and the employer to have those conversations and to really tackle stress early on before they escalate? So as we can see, it's definitely something that is becoming quite alarming um, over the years. Thanks everyone for playing this, this little game. Um, and I think it's a nice insight to know what we have all around the world. But now what I would like to do together is to really zoom into a situation that is a bit closer to us. And I would like for you to experience a, a situation that you may have experienced yourself, that you may have seen uh, for your colleagues as well in, uh, in some organizations. And basically what's going to happen in the next few seconds is that you will experience, uh, you will uh, observe a situation where Chris is having a one-to-one -one with his manager and Chris has not been feeling great lately and he decides to open up about it. 
And so this will be for about three to four minutes. And what I would like you to do during this role play, this live role play, I would love for you to write in the chat um, the uh, work life, um, uh, the, sorry, the challenges that Chris is experiencing um, uh, and that he's expressing to his manager. So whether it's like, you know, struggling with workload or other things like that, just write down what you're hearing from Chris about his issues. Does that make sense? Perfect. Um, cool, let's get started. Well, welcome, Chris, in this one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm a little, I ran a little bit later. I only have three, three or four minutes max, but you wanted to share something, right? Um, yeah, so as I told you yesterday, I just wanted to uh, talk about how, how I'm feeling. Um, I just feel like, um, you know, the work, the workload has been quite increased lately. And um, I I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed. Sorry, it might be a bit confusing. Well, you shared something, uh, you shared something via, via email, which I quickly scanned and I thought we discussed it way earlier already and decided that you should like block your time wisely and not forget lunch obviously so is there any other thing that's on your mind right now well yeah actually I wanted to talk about the work so um I you know I just I just um filled those two positions that I was recruiting for Took me about five months. It was quite tough, and then suddenly I feel like I have five more vacant vacancies to to fill up again. So I feel like the work is never never ending. Um, so I don't know. I just feel like it's a bit much at the moment. Yeah, sure. The times are times are tight, and and we're all very busy. But yeah. So how? What's what's the actual point? Uh, that you're trying to make here because, well, we're all running on a tight schedule here. Um, well, the point that I'm trying to make is that I've been working so hard and, you know, was very happy to fill those positions. And I guess I wish you had expressed some acknowledgements and, you know, just some positive compliments about the fact that I achieved some tasks and I just did not hear anything from you. So I feel like I'm just here to just work, work and work. Ah, sorry. Yeah. So I, I, I see now that it's still in draft. I actually had an email prepared. I totally forgot to send it to you. It, it was meant to be sent to all the team. You're doing a great job. And I think, uh, yeah, we should, we should hit the targets and we're not really close. But at least uh, I, I see you putting in uh, putting an effort there, so appreciate it. I, I have to run, Chris. So if if this is really the point, uh, I, I think uh, yeah, keep going, man. Keep working. Keep raising those numbers. Thanks. Um, see you later. Bye. Bye. Okay. Um... We've experienced a situation here. Curious to see what uh, what popped up for you in the in the audience. I see some some messages. Is there anyone who would like to share a bit more about how they what they observed? I like the feedback coming in there. Yes. Is there anyone who would like to share out loud uh, what they observed? I can try, I can go. Um, yes, that helps, just a summary of what I had in the chat, but very good acting, first of all. <laughs> well done. That was really fun to, to watch. Um, but yeah, it was very much, uh, clearly the manager is also very, like has a lot of pressure, has a lot of work to do. There's no time for the employee. The employee is completely overwhelmed and no one is managing helping him manage the the workload and it's just getting piled on and not getting any recognition for it either so doing more work overtime headed towards 
burnout, I think, just kind of not being able to handle a lot more, but also no recognition of his work. And it also feels very lonely, like you're just kind of got a lot of pressure on him. Um, it doesn't seem like there's a support system there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's very, uh, very spot on. Um, and I think uh, all the all the areas that you mentioned around the lack of recognition and the work piling up, yes, uh, those were one of the of the biggest um, issues there, and I think it doesn't help indeed. Like uh, Sam mentions uh, in the chat, is that it was a work-centered interaction and not people-centered. So the manager was not showing a lot of uh, empathy to really go into the the root cause of the of the issues. I was not trying to really understand what was happening, or so so it was really. Uh, there was no connection, right, in terms of uh, expressing the issues and trying to listen to them. Um, no worries, Micah, thank you. Um, but uh, yeah, looking at uh, all the messages in the chat, lack of recognition, lack of workload, um, uh, the psychological safety, definitely uh, all those things were, were quite big issues. And so, what we what we found out also based on research is that there are quite some um, specific challenges that employees are experiencing that really leads to higher level of stress and and at the end it can really lead to to burnout as well and that research is really based on the work life areas uh, which is uh, done by Christina Maslach. So we have really those those six areas that we identify that really impacts employee well-being. Andrea, Andrea, could you tell us a bit more about those work-life areas and what what they actually mean? Yeah, um, thanks, Chris. Um, I, I must say uh, the, the, the the times I uh, I talk with people about the areas, most most people can 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 relate to to a lot of those uh, area area names. So workload. Uh, is is all about the, the the level of work you have to do a day, and control is really related to it. So a lot of people uh, can experience high workload, but if they have a good sense of control about how to handle that workload, a high workload isn't necessarily a, a problem and a stressful thing. But if uh, the level of perceived control is low, then workload uh, can appear to be uh, really uh, a stressor too. Uh, community is obviously about uh, collaboration and about communication and how you interact with each other from a team and organizational perspective, also from a sort of a broader, a broader perspective. Uh, reward isn't, isn't necessarily about like financial rewards, but also about, well, what we just tried to, uh, to show during a little chat is also show empathy and show um, understanding about difficult situations, but also show appreciation for things that are uh, being achieved. And fairness is, is also a lot of, uh, reflects also a lot about the leadership style and how they uh, go about treating people uh, if there's an equal playing field, so to speak. So as, has everybody the same um, uh, podium uh, to, to, to speak up or to, uh, is, there, um, is there room to disagree on things? Um, and values also reflects on your personal values and to what extent they align with uh, the mission of the company and the values of the company. So um, all those six areas basically reflect the, the, the level of fit with, with you and, uh, and your work. So we always see it as a sort of relationship with work, like you have a relationship with, with your friends or your partner. Uh, is it a good fit or not? And uh, what particularly in that relationship is the, is the friction part that causes you stress? Because, uh, yeah, we try to pinpoint uh, the misfits, so to speak, in order to uh, pinpoint what you can work on. So, um, Anna Maria asked about uh, uh, the numbers and the percentages. So, whenever we display scores, thanks, Anna Maria, for uh, raising that one. Whenever we show scores, we always start with uh, a 50 base. A 50 stance is the kind of the neutral base towards not saying it's a good fit or it's a bad fit. It's just the starting point. Um, whenever we reflect with people and they show a positive sentiment regarding that work life area, then we see the sentiment going up and the numbers going up. Whereas if there's, uh, if there's a negative sentiment on that area, 
you see uh, the sentiment going down and the scores appear to be in the red. Uh, and the percentages show the change over time. So um, if you uh, have a certain week which uh, you reflect negatively on a number, then the sentiment uh, shows a drop and uh, it shows a decrease in score. So is this is direct, sorry to interrupt. This is directly related to noon, right? The things that you are capturing. Like these are the numbers from the app. Yeah, exactly. Okay. okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you see the the metrics, and actually they're they are also based on uh, research done by uh, Maslach and Leiter, as uh, Christian already mentioned. And it's all about calculating the the match match or the match with work, uh, in order to get to a good understanding of to what extent you match on those six areas of work life and the underlying questions, obviously. So what we do is we integrate with um, existing uh, existing tools like Slack. Well, we actually launch with Slack, so it's the only tool we're currently running. Uh, and that gives you the, uh, the moment at each a day, one a day actually, to reflect on your work life with a very important question on one of those six areas. So it gives you time to reflect and to see to what extent you feel there's a match there. And all those uh, insights are being uh, computed and being displayed on the dashboards. As you can see, a team dashboard here. And um, well, we, we, we are, from new perspective, we only show aggregated scores on a team dashboard. So we never display personal results uh, from a question perspective. So the tool is essentially a safe space for you to reflect on your uh, relationship with work. I don't want to make a commercial out of it. So I want to keep it very short. But if you, uh, if you have questions about the noon or the noon scoring, uh, please uh, feel free to reach uh, reach out to me later. Cool. So um, we just talked about the work life areas and how noon is utilizing the different work life areas to identify stress um, challenges early on before they they escalate. So in this session, we really want to see how we can find solutions to tackle each of these areas. So in the session today, we'll get to really practice together, share knowledge on best practices to tackle um, all of those, because we do believe that if we tackle those areas early on, and uh, we can really make a big impact and we can prevent employees from reaching a point that is sometimes a bit too far or too late. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do today. Um, I'm just gonna pause here for a second. Um, is it is it clear in terms of the work life areas, or does anyone have any any questions on those? Yep, all clear, perfect. Um, so and uh, then we're gonna move forward. And actually, this would not be a um, workshop about well-being if we did not practice it ourselves during this session. So we've been sitting for now for about half an hour already, uh, trying to sink in all that information. But I would like us to like gain some energy back so that we can then tackle the second part of the workshop uh, with high energy. Um, so what's going to happen right now is that I'm gonna invite all of you uh, to uh, to stand up. Actually, uh, we're gonna stand up all together if you can. Um, if you also have, if you're able to put your camera on, also feel free to do so. Um, um, and basically, we're gonna just uh, shake it off. Um, Anna Maria, is there some uh, some mu energizing music we can we can have to play for just a minute? Uh, yes, uh, give me a second. <laughs> give me one second, please. Uh, for the others that I cannot see, I hope that you um, that you're standing up as well. If you can, give me a thumbs up if you are. <laughs> <laughs> if you're in a train, in a bus, at work. Okay, I think I have some. I think I have some here. 
So what we do? Are we dancing? Yeah, freestyle dancing. Freestyle dancing. Okay. Raise our arms, left and right, left and right. Oh, that feels good, that feels good. We shake our hips. Moving our shoulders as well, moving tight shoulders. Then we move our legs, left leg, right leg. Right, we kick it. We let all of that tension go. And we finish with a live stretch. And we rest. Right. And we did. One night. All right, let's come back down. How are we feeling? <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> nice to include a bit of movement. Um, maybe if you're in an open space, maybe your colleagues may have wondered what you're doing, but uh, at least we're having fun here. <laughs> All right, I hope this brought some uh, some energy back. Um, uh, I think um, one thing that we had not mentioned is that obviously, uh, although we care a lot about mental health and well-being, there's so much correlation between your physical health and linked to your to your mental health. So it's also something to to think about and to see it as a holistic view. So that's why we like to also practice uh, some exercises to bring back some energy as well. Awesome, Micah. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Um, cool. We're going to move forward with the second part. Um, and I'm going to share my uh, slides again. Let's see. Okay, so as I mentioned, we're going to do a collective brainstorming. Um, we talked about the work-life area, so we're going to practice a bit more into how we can tackle them. Um, in this exercise, uh, we're going to have uh, several group groups uh, split into breakouts. And essentially, each group will be assigned one of the three scenarios that you can see on the screen. Um, and the idea of this um, exercise is to come up with as many ideas as possible to help each employee in those scenarios. So we have um, Aisha, who's an engineer who's struggling with her workload. We have Liz, who's struggling uh, with their autonomy and being undermined by their uh, CEO. And then we have Jamal, who's a software developer who feels isolated and disconnected from uh, his colleagues. So each of you will come up with as many ideas as possible to tackle um, each area to help um, uh, those uh, those employees. Um, if you feel like you also have maybe a, a personal case that you would like to tackle outside of those scenarios, feel free to also use that. And um, the idea too is for you to really explore and play as you see fit. But these scenarios are there to, to help you out. Um, uh, these are just the summaries of the scenarios. Um, uh, we have some more details around the context of it. Um, and the idea behind this exercise is to, by the end of the session, to have as many solutions as possible to tackle each work-life area, and then to also share all those ideas back to you so that you also uh, uh, have some key takeaways um, after the session that you can also use uh, to help your team members uh, and, and managers to, to tackle those, those areas and hopefully improve your colleagues' well-being. Does that make sense in terms of the exercise? Is it clear? Yes, Maria. 
Uh, I just have a question. When we're brainstorming, do we think about solutions that the person themselves has, has to do, or is it solutions that the organization needs to implement or their manager? Like who should be responsible for the ideas? Yeah, um, it's really broad. So ideally we would like uh, things that are as practical as possible. So I think first I would focus on what the employee can do and maybe if, what the manager can do. And if you have some extra time, you can also think from an organization perspective what they can do. But this exercise is a bit more focused on um, on those employees and what they can do. Cool. Is there any more questions? All right. Okay, then maybe just a quick info on the breakout. Uh, who here is joining us from a mobile device? Give me a thumbs up, a reaction or a chat reaction. All right. It looks like everyone's on the desktop, which is great. Okay, Micah, no worries if you have to leave. That's perfectly fine. the The room can con the the room can continue uh, as well. No breakout for me. Okay, cool. So we are breaking out in two groups, and within that breakout room, a mirror board will open for you. And in that mirror board, you will find your group number. The group number is going to be at the top right of Butter, and the mirror board will open in Butter. There's no link. You don't need a second page. You don't need a second tab, etc. Find the area corresponding to your group, and also the uh, the scenario will be waiting for you there. I will also pop it in the chat of the respective breakout rooms. And we're spending about 20 minutes. So start from the individual uh, perspective, their manager. If you still have time, the organizational perspective, your sticky notes on the board, and um, feel free to bounce off uh, some ideas. We're being groups of two or three. Any questions before we move out? I'll keep the I'll keep the track of time for you through the broadcast as well. Any questions? All right. And uh, if there's anything at all during those 20 minutes, you have, you've, you've got questions, you want to communicate with us, you will see a hand um, icon on the right side of your screen. The moment you're going to click that, one of us is going to pop in the room to give you a hand with uh, or, or answer any questions. All right, then have fun. See you back in 20 minutes.
welcome back. back. So, how was uh, the brainstorming? Good. I see some mess and nodding from Maria. Some thumbs up. Yes. How was it for you, Hundred Yen? Yeah, I liked it. Um, I was privileged enough to be in a room with uh, Brittany and Maria, so uh, we shared uh, a lot of nice, uh, nice insights for sure. Awesome. Well, uh, I would love to uh, to hear more about about those insights. How can I? Uh, who, who would like to maybe present that? Uh, Was it for group number one? Are you sure workload challenge? Yes. I think the best idea came from Maria. So Maria, please take the floor. Because <laughs> I have the microphone. <laughs> Happy to. Um, I think we had a really nice uh, discussion about, and it was a very, familiar one because I think I mean I think a lot of people go through this and uh, so we came up with practical things that Aisha could do about the workload itself um, so mapping it out mapping out her workload make it factual and visual to be able to show how much work is actually going on and what she can handle what she cannot handle uh, setting boundaries um, it says that she uh, she feels um show the time yeah so like make it factual and it says she struggles to she she's hesitant to voice her struggles and it might be seen as a sign of incompetence that part we couldn't really get to because there could be a lack of psychological safety for her it doesn't seem like she if she cannot say anything if she if she says you know like i'm struggling like hendrik Young said this um really nicely and he he mentioned you know like if she can she say that at her company or is it going to be seen as weak and um is there is there a person to say that to is there anyone to say that to and we're not the situation is not clear so can she hunt for somebody but she cannot create psychological safety for herself it's the organization's job and the manager's job and it doesn't seem like there is somebody to help her but it's also i think somewhere we wrote kind of being trying to understand the not focusing on the personal reflection both in terms of the work and also maybe try to see if there is a gap somewhere where she could could talk to somebody um i also shared that at my company we had we have a lot of work and it's very fast paced so we started working in an agile way and it really helped because we were on a team and um we would plan together on monday check in on a wednesday and then like close on a friday so it was just a really nice way to commit to not just the work that we were doing but also to commit to each other and we were kind of monitoring each other to say like do you actually have time for that are you sure you can do that trying to protect each other's time and also stress levels <laughs> and not go overboard with it so that was really nice um yeah those were our our suggestions yeah i love that and i think um what really resonated is definitely the psychological safety and the culture aspect is definitely things that are sometimes outside of our control and the only thing we can do is to indeed go go into reflection go into values again which is a work-life area and, and be like okay is it is it an organization um whose values aligns with mine and and is am I still the, a, a good fit here in that sense, right? So sometimes it's, it's a bit beyond just uh, the work or like what's expected of us. So yeah, beautiful, beautifully said. Thank you, Maria. Um, anything else, Hendrik Yan, that you captured from, uh, from the discussion that you had with the group? Well, I think Maria did a great job in summarizing it. And, and, and what I think is interesting is, um, um, well, if, if you sit together and you like in sort of a neutral stance and you have this birth eye view, then you can come up with all sensible things. But 
I find it always find it so hard when you're in that specific spot that you're overwhelmed. It it totally feels like uncontrollable or you're not able to reach that sort of neutral ground to be sensible about it. Because most of the time you just want to get out of that specific situation as fast as you can. And and so hard to to be not emotional about it and don't to make it personal. So uh um, I, I think that's uh, something that, uh, well, really uh, needs some training and building sort of the muscle there to uh, to 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 dare to say, uh, I'm, I'm not, I don't feel okay, regardless of the subject or regardless if it's about workload or it's about a specific task. Just be able to say, I'm not okay. Uh, help me here, please. I think that's a very uh, daring thing to do, which on paper is always good to write down and step up and be courageous with in that specific moment is quite hard. I think that's very spot on. And interestingly enough, I was just expressing that to Anna Maria uh, during the brainstorming because I was telling her that I'm also learning myself how to set an uncomfortable situation, how to embrace this comfort, right? And um, I think framing it as a skill, as a muscle, as you said, Andrew Pian, I think it's so helpful because you can really make it much more tangible and and you can really have the spectrum of like, okay, um, I have not practiced, uh, you know, sitting in discomfort yet, but the more I do it, the more I feel more comfortable and I'm, and I'm have more tools to to navigate that this discomfort. So I think keeping yeah, keep practicing is definitely something that's that is important. Um, but uh, yeah, it's also our decision to uh, to see how much we want to uh, to do uh, that. Yes, Anna Maria. I know that we're talking now from the perspective of what could the individual do, um, and I think it's I am pro. We need to map boundaries and stick to it and be firm and so on. It depends so much on the context um, of the company and the culture and what do I feel safe to do? Because I've worked in companies where that was not the culture, that was weakness. And the moment you would express that and you would be like, I can't, I need help. You were on the list of people to say goodbye to down the line because that's not how we do things around here. Um, and sometimes, depending on the context of the person, if they know that that's what they're going to be um, welcomed with and they don't afford themselves the luxury to lose a job, um, what's the what's the exit there? Like, what, what can you do? So I think that sometimes some of us are really, really squeezed in between two impossible options. The option of, I really do not feel safe because I know that something bad will happen if I speak up. And I cannot afford myself for that bad thing to happen to me right now because I have family, I need money, I need whatever. So that's uh, like with all of the things in life, right? It's the whole system around it. But companies are the ones that should what I'm trying to say, even if you could, if even if you could speak up, and even if you would be that person, if the company doesn't support that type of behavior and that's not rewarded, that's not cherished, but on the contrary, it's being punished, um, the only alternative is to leave, right? Correct. Indeed, it's sometimes it's like forces that you just cannot change, or if you do mm. want to speak up, you will face consequences, right? So indeed, uh, that's not an environment that will help you build the safety and speak up and, and take action because, yeah, that won't make a difference. Um, I think maybe an interesting insight from you, Hendrik, again, because you've been talking to quite a few companies, to a few, uh, quite a few people, leads as well in the organizations and their culture. Um, is there anything that, that resonates with the conversation that you had before? Yeah, I to the point of Anna Maria I really is um, is that it is so dependent on the context of the organization, how people uh, are able to endure certain situations. So it is also sort of the, the the mental state in of not seeing options. So the only option is to accept certain things because the alternative would be 
it's not always the truth, but people think the alternative will be I will lose my job. And that, that sort of gauges them in the situation that to accept a lot of things uh, and limits them in their uh, experimental ways of trying to pick up a conversation and trying to voice, um, to voice concerns. What I find really interesting, I recently spoke with an organization who was not proud of their own culture, but what they were proud about was that they had a sort of an informal, I wouldn't say a body system because it wasn't like that specifically mapped out or anything, but you saw people like teaming up just to comfort each other instead of having to rely on the whole system, which was just wasn't in place. So as an alternative, they found sort of the peers that were struggling with the same things and they sort of at least get some strength and some some sort of understanding from um, creating this sort of informal structure of, uh, well, helping each other out, listening and uh, uh, enforcing each other. But at the end of the day, that's not really what you want to go after, right? It's only what you will do uh, in, if you're in survival mode or not necessarily only if you would be in survival mode. But it happens when you're in survival mode and uh, there are no alternatives. But at least I thought it was an interesting one because, well, you're if you're no, you're not in it uh, alone. You create this sort of mini army just to uh, to pick your fights with, so to speak. And actually, um, yeah, I was also thinking about, you know, how we can improve well-being and, you know, just having this type of session, having, you know, all of us in this session to just brainstorm and then really try to find solutions to improve well-being it's so so helpful uh, because sometimes whether you're in lnd role or well-being specialist role or any type of people role or any role that really supports others i think sometimes we can uh, run out of like solutions we don't really know how uh, what to do anymore so i think i really believe in this power of like community and helping helping each other out so with the solutions that we have come up today on on miro we'll make sure to also summarize all of that and and propose you some solutions um uh, for you to uh, uh for, for you to take away with uh, in your organizations um all right uh we're getting to the end very soon and I'm just gonna reshare my slides and to do a small recap so uh we've been together for almost an hour and a half um what have we learned today we learned that um 46 percent of area employees indicate that their company cannot spot stress levels so there's definitely this issue with like spotting stress level early on before they escalate. Um, I think this is quite key and that's why um, taking measures um, early on is important for organizations to, as prevention um, methods. And the second thing that we looked into is also uh, the framework of uh, Maslex around the uh, work-life areas. It's always a framework that you can refer to to identify some um, uh, um, issues that would impact well-being in your organization. So whenever you listen to a colleague, uh, whether it's your team member, you can try to, to link uh, their challenges to, to those uh, work-life areas. And then this help, helps you gain a bit more clarity on what type of solution uh, you can find to tackle uh, what they struggle with. Um, and uh, last but not least, um, as I mentioned, uh, We'll have a collection of hacks for you to uh, uh, to take away after the session. So we'll make sure to summarize all of that so you have all that knowledge within you. Um, the session is getting to the end. So it's just a moment for us to just reflect. Um, and uh, I would like you to reflect um, on your highlight from today. Um, so I would love for you to think about what was, you know, the most helpful highlight from today's workshop.
Yes, I love the dancing part as well, Anna Maria. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks for sharing those insights. Indeed, getting into the perspective of the employee versus the uh, organizational point of view, in uh, the, the discussion around managing well-being and its complexity, and indeed working agile and managing workload. Um, yeah, really good to see what uh, what stood out for you in this session. Um, Looking at Anna Maria, how, how do you usually close this playground? <laughs> so it, 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 I'm curious to know if there's any type of feedback that you're looking for. We're usually closing them with a round of feedback or a round of insights if you, if you need them. Uh, and otherwise, uh, yeah, thank you for your... Uh, uh, for all the, the data that you share today with us and the insights and giving us the opportunity or the space to talk about well-being and bounce of a couple of ideas. And if there's anything that you are interested to learn in terms of maybe the, um, the formats, um, things that worked, et cetera, in today's session, I think that Brittany, Maria, and myself would be happy to share feedback if you have any concrete questions to ask. Yeah, I think two, two main questions that um, pop up for me is um, one around the topic of, of well-being. Um, I think our main message uh, that we wanted to convey is to really help people gain clarity on the work-life areas and, and to really make sure that after the session they get to um, apply that themselves and that is easy enough for them to, to do that. So that was my first question, like has this session enabled you to, to do that? And the second question uh, that I have is more around the, the format. Um, and is it, do you feel like there's enough um, um, interaction? Do you feel like you're experiencing the topic enough? Um, and, uh, and do you have any yeah, suggestions there? Brittany and Maria, feel free to also use the chat, Brittany, if you have, if you have, if you want to share something, Maria, if there's anything that you would like to share, otherwise, I have some ideas. Um, sure. <laughs> <laughs> what, what um, yeah. Okay. I'll go first. I'll go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I really like the structure. I thought it was really. Uh, I thought it was really nice to. I mean, I like butter. I haven't used it that many times, but I really enjoy it every time I'm in here. Um, but I liked how you brought up the topic and I think there was room to kind of bring it a bit more personal when you showed like the six um, aspects, maybe there was a bit more, um, I think you explained each one really well, but then maybe making it a bit more, I didn't realize like all of those were related to kind of what would support well-being. So that was really interesting. Um, and. I really enjoyed, I've never seen this, but you guys did a really good job with role play. So I think that was a really nice practical thing that people might experience or have seen at their workplace, but they don't really um, recognize it. And then having it, it was very, like the concept was super simple. It was just that you executed it really well and it was really nice to make it very practical um, and recognize it. And the brainstorm was really, uh, really helpful. I think it's not easy to walk away. I didn't find it easy to walk away with tips of how to do it if I hadn't experienced it myself. So if you experience like every, everyone has balances of, um, you know, struggling with well-being on whatever front on all of those six things. So I think that was really useful that you put it into different groups. That was very cool. But then I think it's really hard to walk away with practical things if you don't have the structure that is being supported around you. So I think that was also just very realistic. It's like, you can do this, but then will you have the support to do it? So it didn't end up with, great, I'm gonna go away with five things that I can do, but it, it's really like, wow, this is hard. <laughs> but you did a very nice job of uh, facilitating it and organizing it and I really enjoyed it. So thank you. Thanks, Maria. Thank you very much. I think I saw some feedback from Brittany. Yes, great level of interaction and connection uh, could be helpful to go a little deeper in the work life areas before going into the brainstorming sessions. Yes, thank you for the feedback. Yeah, I think so. Thank you, Brittany. Um, and I, I'm a little bit struggling with finding the balance in not 
sending too much info um, and trying to make it clear while being in this practice. But I think you're right. We could, uh, I could spend some more time explaining them. Hmm. And be adding to what Maria just said, Brittany, I'm not going to repeat those points. Some other things that I had on my notes is something that would have been useful. What what is the what's a process like a good practice process to go about starting with well being in in a company? So if companies or L and D's people departments are hopefully eventually waking up and saying, hey, we need to really do something. We have to change something. What is good practice on how to start that? Do we gather data? Do we talk to people? How do we gather data if people are feeling unsafe to talk to us? Like that, th those are quite wicked, wicked challenges that we're facing as people, persons within companies, sometimes not knowing where to start, what are low hanging fruits? How do we get buy-in? How do we present that data to the upper level? How do we get the budget? How do we get the, the change going? I, I, I recognize that that's a big fish to fry <laughs> in general, but I would have loved some, some, some top like tips, tactics on, on how to go about that process at an organizational level. And yeah, that was already mentioned and you already said that you're going to share a couple of tips. Um, how are these, the work-life areas? What are examples of, again, best practices that, that we could do? Like very simple, how might that look like in, in, in a good example, in a good company where, where we have those, what will we see if, if they're well implemented or well taken care of? Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I have, but yeah, role play, uh, plus one to everything Maria said, it was really cool. Um, so thank you for that. Thank you so much for your feedback. That's super, super helpful. Um, um, and I think uh, there's definitely some, uh, some stuff for, for us to, uh, to keep improving. Um, thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure having you. Um, and uh, yeah, um, I'll see you in the, in the next uh, Playground sessions. <laughs> Yay! Thank you very much. And thanks for joining and speaking till the end. Maria and Brittany, and thanks for hosting. This was awesome. See you soon. Bye-bye. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Bye.